I had decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. back. Welcome to episode 14 of Fear Busters. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Before we begin with praise, let's do some stretching. If so, if you're sitting down at this moment, I will ask you to stand and follow along with me. Each stretching will take five seconds. So count with me. Ready? Ready! All right, so let's begin with our arms and we're going to count five seconds. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. And let's do the other side and count with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job, everyone. And now I want you to try to touch your toes and count five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're gonna do the last step. I want you guys to put your arms up. We're gonna go to the side and stretch side. And come with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Other way. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. And now let's shake our hands. Let's shake our arms. Now shake your left leg. And shake your right leg. Now shake your whole body. Woo, lose it out, lose it out, lose it out. All right, let's begin with praise. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. Always there for us. He's good in every way. Pouring out his awesome love. He's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy. He's good in every way. He gives us all we need and more. He's good in every way. Come on now, join me. Yeah. Join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. It's so much better living in your world. Save you what you did for me.
go see my eye doctor. I can recommend you mine. Her name's Dr. Ha. Huh? Huh? Dr. Ha. Her name's Dr. Ha. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess I'll I guess I'll go check her out. Welcome to Eyes of the Heart Clinic. How can I help you today? Um, I was reading the Bible today with my friend and I couldn't see the passage at all. It was like I was blind to what God is trying to show me. I don't know, I'm confused. Rachel said you could help me. Rachel is my favorite patient. Anyway, about your problem, many people have come to me with the exact same issue of yours. Oh really? How can I fix it? Well, we'll first go through a couple of tests to see how bad your eyes are and then prescribe you with the right glasses. The test will take around 15 minutes. Are you willing to go through these tests? Yes. Anything to fix this, please. Before we start, can you fill out this form? Yeah. My name, Lena Kim. The date is 6, 28, 2020. Date of birth, we don't talk about that. Last checkup, I don't know. Do you go to church? Yes. If yes, how often? Once. A week. Do you go to church because you want to or are you forced to? Forced to. On average, how much time do you spend with God during your week? Only on Sundays. Do you pray? Yes. If yes, how often? Before I eat. 
Do you worship God daily? Explain. Um, I know how to pray songs. Page signature. Here you go, I'm done. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, why don't we take the first test first? Okay, so I'm gonna need you to rest your chin on this right here. Yeah. And then we're gonna go with the right eye first. Yeah. And then you're gonna see a cross. I'm just gonna need you to look at the cross, okay? Okay. Okay. Ah! Um, can you put it back? Can you, put, can you rest your chin right here? Okay. okay, we're gonna try the left eye. Okay. Ah! Hmm. Um, let's just move on. Follow me into my office. Can you stand behind this line right here? Yep. Okay, turn off the lights. Okay, can you cover your left eye with this and look straight at the screen? Mm -hmm. Please read this the words above. For God so loved the... It's getting really blurry, that's all I can read. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna switch the screen now. And then we're gonna be testing your left eye now, so cover your right eye and read the words again. That whoever believe... Yeah, that's all I can read. Even more interesting. Um, can you please wait in the waiting room while I get your results? Okay. My hands are dirty. Results. You can come sit here. Is it bad, Dr. Ha? Well, it's not entirely bad, but what you have is acute spiritual blindness. What's that? So, you obviously have a history with reading the Bible and knowing much about Christianity, but what you lack is knowing who God is in your heart and just how much He loves you. You don't have much of a relationship with God, so you're more of a Sunday Christian causing this type of blindness. What am I supposed to do? There was this video that helped a lot of my patients. Do you want me to send it to you? Mm-hmm. Okay. One day, Jesus was walking with his disciples when he saw a man who had been born blind. The disciples asked, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Did this happen because of his sin or his parents' sin? Jesus answered them by saying that it was neither his sin nor his parents' sin that caused this, but that this man was born blind so that people can see God's power through him. Jesus then got some mud and placed it on the eyes of the man who was blind and said, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. The man did just as Jesus had instructed, and when he came back, he was able to see. Everyone around were amazed, so they took the man to the religious leaders and they asked him how he was healed. After explaining about what had happened, the religious leaders were furious because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath again. Their reactions revealed a different kind of blindness, spiritual blindness. Jesus came to the man once again and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He then asked who the Son of Man was, and Jesus revealed that it was him. Afterwards, the man worshipped Jesus, exclaiming how he now believes in the Lord. Our sin makes us unable to see the truth about God. Jesus came as a light in a dark world, and gave us sight to the true understanding of God and his kingdom.
Blindness is a disease or a condition where you cannot see. The closest experience that I had to being blind was when I was a child, I had pink eye and the doctors prescribed eye droplet medicine that I would put it in my eyes. It was red and swollen. I just couldn't see for hours. And I remember it was so frustrating because I couldn't even just get out of my bed and go to the kitchen for some water or go use the restroom. I just couldn't see. So I was stuck. A person that we see in John chapter 9 today is a man who was blind, not just for a couple of minutes, but for his entire lifetime since birth. Could you imagine? Ever since you were born, and, and he's a man, the Bible says, so, he, so he's pretty old. For his entire lifetime, he didn't see the face of his parents or the sky or the trees or the stars. Imagine his, his entire lifetime, he just heard things and felt things but had no idea, just imagined what they would look like. Jesus comes to this man in John chapter 9, and we see this amazing encounter. Jesus heals him. Could you imagine what this person felt like? His eyes open. For the first time, you could see things that are red or yellow or green or blue. And, oh my goodness, I'm pretty sure it, the experience that he had was something he couldn't describe with words. Another reason why he was probably overjoyed was because he could interact with people. He could worship. In, in the Old Testament and in the biblical times, when you were not perfect, when you had a disease or if, you, if there was um, um, something that was wrong with your body, you could not go and worship. You had to just stay outside. But this person, now being able to see, it opens up so many different possibilities. We see that when he was blind, that he was a beggar. And so he was at a place begging from different people for money or for food, and people would recognize him. But when he his eyes were opened again, people around him were like, wait a minute, isn't this, yeah, that's the beggar. That's the person that was, couldn't see, and oh my goodness, he could see. And so they came up to him, and they asked him, what happened? The Pharisees, they came up to him and asked him, what happened? And this person explained this person called Jesus, he healed me. And the Pharisees, they, they couldn't believe it. They just couldn't believe what had happened. So they even brought his parents to make sure that was their son. And the father and mother finally, they say, yes, this is my son and he's better. But it's interesting. The Pharisees, rather than rejoicing of what happened, of this person being healed, instead of being happy with them, they cast him out. Wow. Wow. His entire lifetime, this blind person was cast out. Finally, he's healed, and he can come back in, but the Pharisees, they cast him out again. Imagine the disappointment that this blind man must have felt. But Jesus approaches him again, and he says this. In verse 35, he says this. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? At that moment, what do you do? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. Jesus is saying, I'm not just your healer. I am your God. Verse 38, he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Brothers and sisters, our God is a powerful God. Amen? Our God is not just someone who just makes us and forgets about us. Our God cares for you and I. Our God heals the blind. In Isaiah, it talked about a Messiah who would come and heal those who couldn't see for themselves. And we see here in John chapter 9, a God, the creator, who comes to this world and cares for the broken and heals this person's blindness. Rather, it was the Pharisees who could actually see with their eyes, but spiritually, they couldn't recognize who Jesus was. They didn't want to accept who Jesus was. Brothers and sisters, sometimes... We are able to physically see, 
But there are moments in our lives where spiritually we're blind to really receiving God in our hearts. What does that mean? It means we just don't want to hear what God says or do what God says. It's almost like, God, you know, I don't want to do that thing. You know, right now, maybe some of you guys are discouraged and you just don't want to hear it anymore of what to do. Or maybe you're just sick and tired of hearing that Jesus loves you and that Jesus cares for you. But brothers and sisters, here, John chapter 9 is talking about two groups of people. The blind man whose eyes were open physically but also spiritually. But the Pharisees, who were blind spiritually, they could see with their eyes physically, but spiritually their hearts were hardened and they rejected God. Let me ask you this morning, where is your heart? Is your heart excited to worship the Lord and recognizing God as our healer and Messiah and saying, God, you are amazing? Or was it really hard for you guys to get out of bed? And, and you really didn't feel like worshiping. and felt like the Pharisees where you just wanted to be like, God, you know, I don't really care about you right now. Let me just do my thing. I pray that God would open our eyes. Amen. That we may trust in the Lord today as well. We are in this coronavirus thing and things are changing every day. As a matter of fact, here in California, the amount of people getting the coronavirus are increasing. And we may wonder, oh my goodness, I thought this was supposed to get better, not worse. How long, Jesus? How long, oh God? But we are called this morning through the word of God to trust in him, to trust in God, recognizing that he is our healer and our guide. At this time, let's pray together. And let's trust the Lord once again. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to pray for all of us here this morning. Lord, that we may trust in you. We learned today about two groups of people, this blind man and the Pharisees. One person's eyes, both physical and spiritual, were opened because they wanted to worship you and they believed in you. But the Pharisees, they rejected you. God, I pray that if our hearts are hard this morning, Lord, give us open hearts that we may trust in you today as well and this week. Help us to really trust you in these difficult times and knowing that you are our God and our Savior and our healer. So, Lord, be with us, Lord. Humble our hearts this morning as well. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Wow, that makes so much more sense. I can't believe how spiritually blind I was. Now I know what I need to do. Carry your new glasses. <gasps> Thank you. Wow, I can see so much better. Thank you.
How do you guys like this week's episode of Fear Busters? Please do not think that you need glasses to improve your spiritual blindness. The only way that you can be better at your spiritual blindness is by believing and growing a relationship with God, not only with your mind or eyes, but with your heart. Also, we would love to see your creativity, so please share your craft with us on Instagram with the hashtag DCLFearBusters or email it to us at DCCDiscipline at gmail.com. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and let's finish with our chant. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Bye.